Um, so if you've never been to Canva before, it's easy. You just go to canva.com. Uh, you're going to have to create an account. You can use your Google account. You can use Facebook. You can create whatever account you want. Once you create an account, you'll end up here. It gives you a couple uh, different choices down here of things you can create. Obviously, infographic is one that we do want to work with. What I normally do is I just go up to here to create a design, and it gives me a lot of different options, right? So if I want the infographic, I can go here, and it gives me the size, right? So if I click infographic, it's easily just going to bring me here, and now I have my blank template for an infographic. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to do more of an A4 um, style of infographic. Um, I just wanted to show you. You can do the infographic here if you want to do it. What I use this for is looking at, at, at dimensions of things, right? So an infographic is 800 by 2000 pixels. If I wanted to do A4, I would just type A4, A4 document. That tells me it's 21 by 29.7 centimeters, right? So that's going to put it into a uh, portrait mode style of, of document, right? Which I already have here, portrait mode. If that works for you, that's great. But if you're thinking, I would really want it to be in landscape mode, right, where it's more horizontal rather than vertical, all you got to do then is look at the dimensions, 21 by 29.7 centimeters, and then just do your custom dimensions. If you have your custom dimensions, you can do it in pixels, inches, millimeters, centimeters, whatever you need, right? And so you just reverse it. The width would then be the 29.7 and the height would be the 21 centimeters, right? Find a size that works for you. But like I said, don't get too long with your infographic. Don't make it super long and skinny. Um, maximum, keep it about eight, uh, 800 by 2000 pixels. Um, A4 document work as well. That's what I'm going to work on today is an A4 document. What you do want to focus on or what you wanted to make sure of is get a size, decide on the size, and stick with it. If you notice, there's a resize button up here, but it's got this little crown next to it, which means that you have to have Canva Pro. Um, I mean, you can buy it if you want. You can try it for 30 days if you want just to resize your infographic. But it's better to get your size correct in the beginning so you don't have to resize. When you, when you first decide on whatever size you want, this is where you're going to land. You can see you got a lot of different options over here on the left. It starts you off with templates. Templates are a good place to start, right? You know, I, I think I told you this with Wix as well. If you see a template that you like, it's a good place to start to give you an idea. But I really want you guys to be personalizing these things to your own needs and your own uh, wants, these sort of things, right? So I like to look at the templates first, just to kind of scroll through. And I'm looking mainly at colors that I might like or a layout that I might like or fonts that I might like, right? And so I can kind of just scroll through some of these and I look for ones that are kind of a little bit different, kind of a little bit cool. Um, what else do we got? got something cool in here. Uh, maybe I, I kind of like this one. So if I go to Jazz Music Fest, I'll click this, right? What I like about this is the background color and the fonts, right? So if I click the background color, well, it's already clicked, obviously. You can see it's right here. If I just go to that, now it'll tell me the exact colors that are being used in this document, right? It gives you right there the, the hex color code, right? This uh, hashtag 175662. So if I want to find that color, all I got to do is jot it down. And when I start creating my own, then I just type it in up here, all right? If I really like that orange, there's the hex color code. If I like this off white, if I like the yellow, whatever it might be, right? So I use templates to look for colors that I think go really well together. And this really puts them together for you, right? So it's, it's kind of cheating, but it's not really, right? It, it does a good job for, for that sort of thing, if you want to use it for that. Same thing if you want to use it for the uh, fonts, right? If I click this font, I now know it's Playfair Display, black, right? So I'm going to jot that down, and that's what I'm going to use in my infographic. I have this one down here, which is Gidol. Um, and this one's probably Gidol, too. Maximum two fonts. I like the way they work together. Maybe I want to use those in my infographic, right? So I just use these and then I can always just undo and I go back to my blank thing, right? So I can just scroll through and if I see other ones that I like, I can take their colors, I can take their fonts and just play with them, right? So that's what I would say, use, use the templates to start gaining ideas. Um, the next thing we have is uploads. And I got a couple of uploads in here already because I just did it beforehand. There's no need to really go through it, but I wanted to show you, this is one of our, uh, free 
icon websites, flat icon. I have put it on our Moodle for you. And this has, you know, access to 3.3 million, almost 3.4 million different icons that you can go through, right? So if you're looking for something specific, you can type it in up here. If you are just kind of looking to see what they have, you can obviously scroll. But again, you got to make sure that you're not looking at the premium ones with the crown. You want to look at the free ones without the crown. So I just did a quick search for hamburger and I found this first one looks pretty good. This hamburger here, it's got a little bit of drippy cheese on it. Looks pretty tasty. It's getting kind of late in the night. I'm getting pretty hungry. And so if I click on this, then I'm here. What's cool about flat icon is a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, it'll give you three different types of the same icon. So here is the icon with the black outline. Here is the icon with black outline, no color. And here's the icon of uh, no black outline with color, right? And so here's where you're gonna have to decide on consistency of icons. It also gives you a bunch of different icons of what a burger could look like as well down here. So you can always scroll through and find something else that you like. But you have to decide on the consistency of icons, right? It gets weird if you start switching between, you know, ones without color and a black outline and ones without the black outline and color. It starts looking really strange together. So I'm just going to use the ones that have a black outline and color. Once I find it, I'm just going to go to PNG. PNG is fine. You'll do the free download. I already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do it. Then I also wanted to search for some hot dogs because I'm still quite hungry and missing delicious American cuisine. And so what I did is I, I took this hot dog here because it stays consistent with the black outline. So it's got the Coke bottle and, and this sort of thing. So it looks good. I like it. But you can see it gives you lots of different other types of, of the same type of icon, which are kind of cool, right? This one is a little bit unique. Maybe you want to use something like that. And it gives you the sort of pack where all of this comes from as well. Um, so I downloaded that one. And then just to show you what it looks like against the inconsistency, I took this hot dog because it had the same sort of drippy style. We got the dripping ketchup rather than the dripping cheese. Remember we had the dripping cheese in the cheeseburger. Now we got a dripping ketchup hot dog. So I downloaded this one as well, just to show you what they're gonna look like. So let's go back here. So the, I've got them all in here. It's easy to upload. You just go to upload an image. You can do it from your computer if you download them or if you have them on Facebook, Google Drive, blah, blah, blah. You get it, right? Super easy. Or just drag and drop. You just find it in your computer and drag it over here. So once you get that, all you gotta do is click on them and boom, there we go, we got a hamburger. Take it down a little bit, it's a bit big for a hamburger. Uh, we'll put our hot dog and our Coke in there as well. Um, and then we'll put our hot dog without the border, right? Just to kind of show a comparison. You can kind of see the weirdness and the inconsistency between icons that have the black outlines, they look a lot better together and the one without it looks a bit strange, right? It doesn't really fit. So this is where you gotta look at consistency, internal consistency of your icons, the icons you choose. So it's easy enough. You can always just drag any images or any videos from your, your computer into here and they can easily go directly into your, your design, into your, your infographic, right? So we have three different websites for icons. This is one of them. You can use this one. Obviously you could just use Google if you want and Canva has its own icons as well, right? So if I wanted to, I could just search for hot dog in here and Canva gives me lots of different icons. But again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're free and not paid for pro, right? So you could do anything you want. There's tons of icons for you to look for. So don't get, uh, don't get stressed out about looking for perfect icons in, in Canva only, they're everywhere. Um, the next thing I'm gonna to go to is photos though. Photos are actual photos that you can use, that you can upload. Uh, Canva gives you a bunch of stock photos here. If you want to use any of these, you can. Uh, I'm just going to use this cat because it's the first one that I saw, this Chinese cat thing. Once you click on it, boom, there it is. We'll put it up here, make it a little bit smaller. The elements tab is going to be something that's quite useful for you. Again, there's icons here, there's lines if you need to do separations, if you need to put sections into it. There's shapes and you can change the color of the shapes, different things like that. Frames is the one thing that I want to show you. Frames basically put a frame around any image that you have, right? So if I were to put this circle frame here, then it comes up and if you ever see these little clouds with the sky and the rolling hills, that means you need to put an image in it. So if I just click on my cat here and drag it on top, and there we go, now my cat has a frame over him. But he's not really centered, right? It looks kind of strange. So all I gotta do is double tap on him and then I can move it to where I want it to be. Now he's a little bit more centered and I click away now he's in my circular frame here, right? 
So frames are cool things to use if you need them. Otherwise, you got stickers, charts, grids are also going to be used for uh, images because you have these rolling hills and clouds. You got gradients. <laughs> Look at that. You got coronavirus icons now. That's fun, right? There's so many coronavirus infographics out there. I guess they had to start making them. Um, there's just different packages of icons, right? So you can always look to do that. These are font combinations. So you can use these font combinations. You can always just Google font combinations as well to see what fonts really work well together. You can scroll through and find something that you like. So all you do is click on it and it'll put it over here for you. What's great here is now you can click on level up. It gives you the font HK modular. So if you didn't find a font in the templates that you like, you can look down here for the different fonts that go together. HK modular is this one, HK modular is that one. That's great. Gives you the font colors, right? The text color. So if you really like the color, there's the hex code for you. But what's cool here is that it's automatically grouped together, right? So if I don't want level up, I'm going to put USA barbecue. Yeah, barbecue food, right? So we just change it and now that's that. It's settled. What's cool here though is that they're grouped together. So these won't move away from each other, right? If you click on it, it's always going to move together, these two pieces of text that we created. If we wanted to move them together, we'd have to go up here and we'd have to ungroup them. So when we ungroup them, now, if I click on just USA, USA will move for me. See? It'll move away from barbecue. You can always bring it back. And if you want to group items together, you click on one, you hold shift on your keyboard, click on the other one, and you can group them back together. And now they will move together with each other perfectly again, right? So if I really like the way that these three icons are placed together, I like the spacing, I like the alignment, and if I need to move them, I want them all to move together. So I will just click on the first one, I'll hold shift, click on the second one, click on the third one, I'll click group. And now these three icons are one whole thing that I will move together, right? But you can also see that my framed Chinese cat is on top of my icons, right? So this is where we have to look at position. Position means we can move it forward. So now our icons are on top of our cat, right? So it's the idea of layering things on top of each other, another universal principle of design that we talked about. But you can also position them, you know, middle alignment, center alignment, and that way it's right in the middle of the page, or right alignment, bottom of the page. The next thing is videos. Uh, I would avoid adding videos because you're using an infographic. It should be a static um, multimodal text, so let's not use videos for this thing. Background is the last thing. Gives you lots of different um, unique backgrounds. A lot of them are quite busy, right? So if I wanted to add this as my background, it kind of works, but it's, it's taking away from the legibility of my USA barbecue, right? Same maybe if I were to do this one. It's a little bit stranger, right? So when you're considering backgrounds, choose one that's not going to take away from the legibility of your text, especially if you have small text on here. Otherwise, you got your colors, right? You got your color palette. Pick a color. You can type in the hex code here, or you can just search for whatever color red, blue, blah, 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 right? These sort of things. Obviously, there's lots of other things you can mess with up here. Animation effects on your background or any images you put. There's lots of filters. You can adjust them based off of brightness and color. If you know how to play with those things, you can crop them. You can flip them vertically, horizontally, these sort of things. It's this transparency button here. And so if I just lower the transparency, all my icons start to fade away into the background, right? Or they come back. So you can look at transparency if you need to play with that. So if, if you have a lot of different elements in your public, in your public service announcement, what am I talking about? In your infographic, um, it could start being difficult to start to keep clicking on the right one or the wrong one. And you might start moving things that you don't want to move, which will get really frustrating. And you just want to like smash your computer or smash your head into your keyboard because everything was perfect. And then you just can't click on the right thing to move it. Instead of going crazy and getting super stressed out and destroying your computer, just lock that, that, that element into place. Once you lock it, it can't be moved anymore. If you find, if you really like this cat photo and you want it again, you want it the exact same size, the exact same position, the exact same everything, all you gotta do is duplicate it, duplicate it, and now we got two of these cats. All you gotta do is get in and play with it. Canvas, super easy. Um, everything that you do is automatically saved into your Canva account. So if I were to go home, 
into my Canva account, this would be here. But just to be safe, it's happened before where students put a lot of time and effort and then they lose internet and then for some reason all of their design is gone. I would just download it every once in a while so you have something to work from, right? Or sharing a link doesn't really work. But download it. This is how you're obviously going to uh, submit it to me and now you're going to publish it on your website. Download it as a PDF. You'll download it, it'll go straight to your desktop and then you put it onto your, your website from there. So Canva is not, not difficult to use. I use it more than any of the other um, programs that I suggested. Um, like I said, if you want to take the challenge and use GIMP, which is similar to Photoshop, or if you have a real copy of Photoshop or a pirated copy of Photoshop, and you feel comfortable using it, obviously do that. Uh, this is just to show you the sort of, not the easy way to complete this assignment, but probably the, the less stressful way to complete this assignment. And for those of you who have no sort of experience with not just design, but in poster creation at least, this is probably where you want to start, just to get your, get your toes wet a little bit. Hopefully that was helpful. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.